Welcome to this edition of Diplomatic Passport, the show that gives daily weekday updates on coronavirus and its impact on Zimbabwe and beyond. My name is Robert Mkundiwa. Before we get into the gist of today's story, please send us pictures or video of how you're dealing with the lockdown. How are you spending time? What are you doing at home? And if you are critical staff and have to be at work, how are you taking each day at work in this unusual of times? Also feel free to post comments here in our comments section, telling us where you are watching us from today and what you are also up to in lockdown and if there are things you would want us to do better in this show to better inform you on the issues. Our diplomatic passport, of course, allows us to take you anywhere and travel beyond the headlines with you. Today we start by focusing on a small issue that left us stupefied and eventually hung over over the weekend. The story that the Zimbabwean police, the ZRP, had effected a ban on the trading of alcohol during Zimbabwe's 21-day lockdown. It was a fancy copying and pasting of policy elsewhere in our region, probably South Africa, but it was not well thought out. Certainly, South Africans have more savings and disposable income than Zimbabweans, that is known. Effect a ban on alcohol trading in South Africa, and a man will just go to his savings for budget reallocation and redirect from savings to beer stocks. Do the same in Zimbabwe, where we hardly have savings, and that panic means people will redirect money from essentials and buy alcohol. The social security disaster for families is immense. Less than a handful of hours after that pronouncement was made, however, it was reversed. It's a damning indictment on policymaking and inertia. It is a case of the right hand not knowing what the right hand is doing, never mind the left one. In a time of crisis, people need leadership and decisive leadership at that. Pronouncements that are changed hastily in the blink of an eye do anything but inspire confidence in policymakers. Hopefully the ZRP will go into deeper introspection before cutting and pasting policy. To imbibers, however, around the nation, a toast. Next we focus on a very important aspect of the Zimbabwean response. Testing, testing, testing. Just a few hours ago, a landmark case was brought before the cause. In the case, medical doctors in Zimbabwe are suing the government over shortages of personal protective equipment, PPE, those words, those letters, yet again, for their health workers. The Zimbabwe Doctors for Human Rights, ZDHR, on Monday filed an urgent chamber application at the High Court to compel authorities to expedite provision of PPEs. The Health Minister, Dr. Obadiah Moyo, Finance Minister, Professor Mtuli Nube, and Transport Minister Joe Bigimatiza are cited as first, second and third respondents in the application. The doctors, through their legal representative, Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights, also want government to intensify COVID-19 testing during the 21-day lockdown period as per World Health Organization guidelines. We spoke to the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Doctors for Human Rights on why they decided to go the legal route. Of, uh, personal protective equipment for health workers, both in government and in private uh, practice. Uh, the government has got that obligation to make sure that uh, health workers are protected from uh, this um, uh, infection we have seen from other countries. Uh, approximately 14 to 20 percent of all the infections uh, are due to health workers getting infected. So we need to protect our health workers because they are on the front line. Uh, these are the front line soldiers who are battling um, uh, this infection. So we need adequate protection for them, even those in private are uh, actually being uh, affected because uh, some people, when they get sick, they just uh, attend to private surgeries, to um, accident and emergency uh, uh, hospitals and centers. So uh, government should make sure that all those people also, the people who are on the front line who are screening them, they have uh, access to uh, personal protective equipment. Well, a poignant case made there by Dr. Matare, and we hope the authorities and the doctors shall find each other for the benefit of the nation and those affected in particular. 
Dr. Matare also talks about the importance of testing, which is another issue cited in their court case. Uh, as of yesterday, the government conducted uh, only nine tests. We think it's very few, considering uh, the number of people that they themselves said uh, they came into the country in the past three weeks. They mentioned almost 16,000 people coming in um, into the country. We really understand that uh, even in other countries, uh, not everyone is getting tested. But we also think that the numbers that are being tested right now is uh, very, very low. We need to take a leaf from what other governments like South Africa are doing. They are doing a wide uh, spread screening and testing um, a program which is very good because they are able to identify the people with the infection and um, uh, they are able to do contact tracing. This lockdown that uh, we are in at the moment is a very good thing that we support but it needs to be complemented by a widespread uh, screening and testing uh, program uh, that needs to be rolled out in the whole of Zimbabwe and not only in, in Harare only. Well there you have it, uh, Dr. Norman Matare making his case there with regards testing which is a very big and important issue uh, of course he also mentions that it seems it's centralized uh, to just Harare and that's of course something that you have been uh, citing and saying we need to cast the net wider and look at other places and other areas of course I did say perhaps you could start by giving us feedback from all over the country wherever you may be with regards what is going on there so that we have a holistic look at our nation and our nation's look and response to COVID-19. And yet the issue of testing is not only a Zimbabwean dilemma for those in the trenches, as in the doctors and the nurses alone. It's a no-brainer. If we don't test, we don't know what we're dealing with. The word for that is ignorance. In truth, should we not scale up testing, our lockdown efforts will amount to naught. This is also an argument made by Dr. Prosper Chonzi, the city of Harare's health director. Let's hear his opinion on this. Today we are counting, but it's the numbers. It's the numbers that I'm worried about. We should be. I know we received 20,000 test kits, PCR, PCR test kits um, last week. So if we could utilize those, and then we know we have at least tested 20,000 people, and then we see how many out of those 20,000 are positive, how many are negative, then we can start looking at, at, at how the outbreak is unfolding. So obviously, uh, testing is a contentious one, right down to what methods people use to test. Last week, we had Nyarazo Group testing workers, and that elicited mixed feelings. But not testing at all is something we cannot afford, not at all. On to statistics now, and we are at a static point. Whether it is down to our low levels of testing, or that we are responding well to the pandemic, Zimbabwe has still got nine COVID-19 cases, including one death. And yet we can never overemphasize the importance of testing, no doubt. Last week, we stood by vendors whose wares had been destroyed in Matare and are still seeking official word from police authorities. We are not tiring in that regard and will furnish you with the responses once we have them. However, much as we reason that those who provide wares for green grocers are essential services and should not be harassed. Their words ought not to be destroyed or burnt. We cannot afford that as a nation. There are a million other things that we can do to food than destroy it, especially at a time such as this. Last week, we interviewed the third patient in the COVID-19 case, Sol Sakujga from Rua, and many of you asked whether they have a treatment regime amongst other questions that you sent. That full interview is now live on our social media handles, including our Facebook page and YouTube pages. So all those answers are available for you. Add to that, the answer to the question on medication is yes. They are on medication. He even went on to say that Prosper Chonzi constantly and consistently checks up on, his, on him and his family. That is the city of Harare health director. So thumbs up to Dr. Chonzi for being hands on. Also related, many sections of local media in Zimbabwe caught onto our story and helped us spread awareness with uh, credited stories to our team for unearthing what was a mammoth story. Others, of course, ran without credit. Either way, we shall make sure our diplomatic passport accommodates fellow media houses as well as so that we disseminate information to every corner of the country, whether they are honest to credit us and tr tell the, their readers 
that they're traveling on our stamp or not, that is a case for another day. We can report that Saul and his family continue to recover well and we continue to wish them a speedy recovery. Earlier on, we asked you what you're doing with your family during this lockdown and I see uh, responses coming. Please keep sending those in and tell us what you're doing with your families. Of course, uh, some of you are um, irked by the response by ZRP from last week uh, to the vendors and of course, you're still irked by the fact that they had decided to enact an alcohol ban and we see that from Rura Mai Mash who is irked by, those, uh, by, by the police. Um, we've also got Matt Fisher saying he's watching with us and uh, Ben Gassi who's watching with us also from Europe. Tomorrow, we go in search of the talented and immensely artistic creature called Jar Prazer. True, we want to know what you are up to and what your families are up to, but we also know that you want to know what our stars are up to. He has released a monster video for Kuma Umbui. Now we want to follow him and find out that after being forced to hang his mic, what is he doing during this lockdown? Finally, it is a shocker we could never make up. In a letter addressed to Dr. Chonzi and signed by uh, Onyas Ndoro, the Director of Traditional Medicine in the Ministry of Health and Child Care, on behalf of the Secretary for Health and Child Care, traditional medicines are being roped in to treat COVID-related cases. The letter is clearing a traditional medicines practitioner, a TMP, so that he can be allowed to administer traditional medicines to willing people who may have COVID-19 or are, are symptomatic of the disease. I leave that up to you and our team shall be pursuing that story further for tomorrow's edition uh, of News Blitz as well as an update for tomorrow's edition of Diplomatic Passport. Indeed, uh, the issue of traditional medicines has always been one that is contentious. Uh, some people would rather use uh, traditional medicines as something to complement what they'll be getting officially. We've already been looking on social media and some people are for the idea while others think if the medicine hasn't been tested, it could be misleading people. So we also want to hear from you going forward today on your views regarding the use of traditional medicines for coronavirus. With all due respect to traditional healers, what should be the role of traditional medicines in the pandemic such as this that involves viruses, if any at all? So keep your questions and contributions coming in at robertmkundiwa at ztn.co.zw and we'll take them to the authorities in order to keep them accountable to the citizenry and that is you. So we look forward to hosting Jar Praiser tomorrow and knowing what he is up to and what he is doing. But for now, have a good evening and stay safe. My name has been and will always be Robin Kundiwa and this has been Diplomatic Passport.